Hello and welcome to Basel Tov, the courage and creativity of ADHD. I'm Jen. I'm Ellen. And I'm Annette. And we are back here with another lovely episode of Basel Tov. So today we're kind of, you know, breaking with the track that we've been on of doing a couple of little micro series, I guess, because we've we've done like two episodes about parenting, two episodes about or about something else. I can't. Oh, mental health. Yeah, mental health. It was like mental health and then parenting. (laughs) And now we're kind of breaking with that. And we're going to talk about something that does contribute to your mental health and your health in general in a big way. But sometimes it doesn't get talked about as much as it should. And that is nutrition. Yeah. So nutrition is especially important for ADHD people because um, there are things called nutritional triggers. Some people call them dietary triggers um, or food triggers. But they basically are foods that you eat that trigger your ADHD to come out even stronger and like maybe more agitated. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. it's really important for us to eat the best foods. So um, I know that every single one of us here has had experience with different random food triggers (laughs) and they can be different for different people. That's another kind of weird, Mm -hmm. wild thing is some people will tolerate an ADHD trigger food very well. And then the next ADHD trigger food, they will tolerate horribly. And, you know, somebody else, it could be a different food or series of foods. So we just got to keep that in mind that just because one person says it's okay for them doesn't mean that it's okay for everybody who has ADHD. Um, that is so true. Because diets are such a personal thing. Like, you know, they're, mm-hmm. they're very personal. Um, yeah. So Annette, I know that you have been through the ringer in the past with different <laughs> different dietary fuckeries. Yes. <laughs> so would you care to share some of the ways that food has fucked with your life? <laughs> oh. Yeah. And, and your and your brain. How, yeah. how does food influence your thoughts and yeah, your ADHD symptoms? Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't something that I had really thought about. And uh I did have to take nutrition classes back in the day. Of course I did, but uh And Mm -hmm. so I did understand, you know, the role of nutrition and hormones and brain chemicals. And I, I, you know, I I did look into that, but never really thought about it. And uh, recently, I just kind of started thinking, because I uh, recently, um, just recently, I've been able to start eating foods that I hadn't been able to eat before. And uh, so I've been having a joyous time eating bread and, you know. (laughs) noodles and all sorts of things that I hadn't ate um we're I'm not we're not sure so uh after I had changed yeah maybe um after I had Corinne and Layla um Mm. I I suddenly started having bad reactions to soy and uh wheat like gluten things and Mm. so um my fingers that that, that is a hormonal thing right when you have a reaction like that isn't it can be it can be it can also be uh your microbiome in your gut and you know there's lots Mm. of different things that it can be so uh like SIBO or you know it can it can cause that reaction as well um but so I I never really pinned down what it was but like my my joints would get swollen and uh so we thought it might be yeah we thought it might be celiac but um Hmm. then suddenly i was able to have soy again and then suddenly i was able to just like eat wheat again and no swelling no problems no nothing uh so i started eating all the foods that i couldn't eat for years and now i'm starting to gain a little (laughs) weight uh, (laughs) yeah so um, there's more options more options available (laughs) now yes and you know the the uh impulse control of uh mm-hmm. or lack thereof has made me look mm-hmm. at donuts and go you know i really shouldn't eat that because i really need to watch but i'm gonna have it yeah. i haven't had it for seven yeah. years and, yeah so uh, just but, one it's just one it's fine yeah mm-hmm. and i was or two yeah and and i've recently <laughs> been having more anxiety than i mm. ever had before and mm-hmm. um more difficulty sleeping, more stress. And I, uh, mm. I was, I was like, I wonder, like, I don't feel really happy 
recently, and I wonder why. Mm-hmm. And I, w- and I started it's googling... fucking winter, man. That's well, it that just too. makes everything worse. Yeah, that, that too. too. <laughs> but this year, this year seems to be harder than usual, and I'm not sure why. Mm-hmm. But I started googling like, are happy people thinner? And it's like it's actually kind of a thing. <laughs> it's a, it's actually a thing. And so I was like, okay, Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. yeah. They tend they <laughs> tend to be thinner. They tend to not overeat as much because they're not having uh they're not emotionally eating. Oh yeah. interesting. Right. I don't know. I know Why some skinny people, people I know skinny people that are, that are pretty miserable though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Some of it does have to do with your metabolism, but yeah, right. but happy people tend to be thinner and healthier. And so but I was like let's talk about whether or not happy people are only or that thinner people are only happy because they're not getting like lambasted to the degree as heavier people are. Well, well, that I might think... be part of, they got they got thin privilege there for yeah, you know. I... Yes, society doesn't pick on them. Yeah, I think. Well, I mm-hmm. think their happiness has so many different aspects to it, and yeah, yeah I mean, totally. we we yeah. could also say that maybe the three of us are a little happier than maybe you know a black or brown person because we don't have to deal with the you know societal crap that goes along with having darker skin. We, so yeah, we do. I mean, we do have to acknowledge that privilege. Whatever, yeah. pri- mm-hmm. everyone has some privilege in some area of their life, I guess. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. We we didn't get the the jackpot of being white men, unfortunately. No. But that's okay. I love being a girl, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'll I'll take being a girl. I, we, I still, I, we still got a lot of privileges, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. but anyway, we're going down so, a rabbit hole. <laughs> yes. So uh, <laughs> happiness, and I was like, okay, so how do I get more happy? Because yeah, oh my god, wow. and, and then I started yeah. thinking, and I was like, I'm having more anxiety than usual, and I'm eating mm-hmm. more like sugar and breads and things that I couldn't eat before Uh oh and then I realized yeah and then I realized in the years that I didn't I was thinner my mental clarity was better I had Mm -hmm. more control over my ADHD symptoms and my anxiety (laughs) and then I thought Mm -hmm. back even further to when I was like a high school student and and a university student and like the massive amounts of anxiety I would have. And then I thought back even more and I was like, every time I'd eat a big like Mexican food meal or like a big carb heavy meal, Mm -hmm. I would suddenly feel so sick to my stomach and feel like my heart was pounding and it would, I would throw up. I would get sick. And now I recognize that as anxiety. And so I was like, well, that's interesting. So I ate a carb heavy meal the other day. And sure enough, my anxiety just went like, whoa. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah. That's so noticeable. That's a thing. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. It's just, and, and that just goes to show how some people can, you know, get away with eating like, you know, a giant rice bowl. And, and they'll mm-hmm. be they'll be fine. They'll be, be absolutely fine. fine. And maybe totally. that is actually what's good for them. Like you know, if they have lower blood sugar levels, for instance, and need to mm-hmm. keep their blood sugar levels up, they might actually eat more starchy, carby foods. Um, but then there are some people who just get, unfortunately, the shitty end of the stick, mm-hmm. and we can't eat all those tasty foods. Damn it! No. And I no. really. <laughs> I really recognize that. Oh man, I gotta be like Kato. <laughs> mm, sucks. <laughs> I do oh, better. Man, I do better with foods that are lower on the glycemic index with proteins mm-hmm. and cut out mm-hmm. sugar. Sugar does does me dirty. Dude, oh, sugar man. is so bad for us, isn't it? I mean, it's just it so is. toxic. But it, it causes is. inflammation, it. right? Yeah, it, to- yeah. Does. it does. It absolutely does. It does. And if you if you uh, do any studying about ADHD and inflammation, you'll know mm. that anything that's inflammatory will spike up your ADHD because of the way that the mm-hmm. uh, neurochemicals yeah. and inflammation works. Well, okay, mm-hmm. so I, I I'm I can't remember if I've shared this on the show or not, but I got diagnosed with epilepsy in my twenties, <clears throat> actually, and we never really figured out what happened, like why it started then. Most people get it when they're a kid. But uh, yeah. could have been could have been from a car accident, um, even though I didn't hit my head 
you know, but I remember hmm. reading a lot about the ketogenic diet back then because a lot of people that have seizures go on that. And mm -hmm. um, I, that this was like way before keto even was like popular. You know, this was like 2008 probably. And uh, it, it was so fascinating to me how yeah. if you eliminate carbs, your brain's like that. But carbs are yeah. so good, and I really like gummy bears. So yeah, you know, mm. I didn't. I, I, I <laughs> um, gummy bears. But, yeah, <laughs> it is hard to be mindful sometimes, but like, man, it really does pay off. If you eat the right thing, you are gonna feel better. Yeah, right. And, you know, if you if you think about it, you know, human beings, we, we are animals. And what do animals eat? Well, we eat, you know, meat and berries mm -hmm. and fruits and things that mm -hmm. nature provided. Then yeah, to right. grow a bigger civilization, we ended up, you know, harvesting grain <laughs> right. and making bread and things like that. But red, that's, red vines don't grow in the wild. You can't no, eat those out there. No, you can't. Donuts. Yeah. There's Sorry no to donut burst tree. Off the bowls. <laughs> <laughs> if only donuts grew on bushes. Yeah, but yeah, it makes yeah. sense for it. It makes sense for neurology and biology that those foods would be beneficial for us. Yeah. So how did we let it get so bad? I mean, I feel like it's so hard to find unprocessed food that's quick and easy. And well, OK, mm -hmm. it sounds like in Japan, because from what you've told us about like the 7-Elevens there, they have yeah. like really good like seaweed wrapped rice and, you know, fresh mm -hmm. things there. So I, I feel like Japan might be killing it a little better than the U.S. anyway on like the, the food. You know, yeah, there's qualities. also a lot of there's <laughs> there's still a lot of rules here against putting in preservatives into things like you're not oh, going to find American good. bacon here because the nitrates you can't, you know, oh. you can't put nitrates into meat. And but that's so, a secret ingredient. I know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, but, I mean, our country, uh, the United States is really like almost last in the pack for nutritional greatness Dude, out there in the world. So bad. I have had personal conversations, like face-to-face -face conversations with people from other countries. I used to work at a uh, multinational bank. So like they, they would kind of transfer people around from one continent to another a lot. So we get to, you know, talk to people who were from other places, which was really cool. Oh, that's fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was really interesting hearing how in Australia, most of the most of the McDonald's menu that is the menu here in the United States, like the Big Mac and all this stuff that we're real. We, we know it. We we know what it is. We know when the McRib is coming out every year. There's commercials. <laughs> It's a national but, holiday, right? Yeah. <laughs> for some of us. I don't know about for me. Um <laughs> But anyway, I, I, I always say if it looks like it has bones and it doesn't, you better run. Um, so, <laughs> well, that's the same as a chicken nugget. OK, like... I know, right. Point to the point to the diagram of the chicken. Where is the nugget? Like, well, you pull that apart. Right. It, it, it doesn't even do the Brady thing that chicken does. Right. Like, the strings. no. Like, well, they like put a, a McDonald's separated chicken. Yeah. 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 Well, plus, mm -hmm. plus they put McDonald's chicken nuggets under a microscope and they found these little like thread like things going through them that definitely were not meat. <gasps> they were like probably plant of some meat kind, filler. but we yeah. oh. like some kind of filler. So there's but probably you know quite what? a lot of soy. <clears throat> but you know what? They're delicious. Mm -hmm. I know they're so fucking good. They're kind of flavorless, actually. Like well, that's what the good. barbecue it's sauce flavorless. is for. Oh no, honey mustard, baby! All oh, the honey way. mustard oh, is my good. God, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're not even going to start counting how many preservatives and awful things that these sauces have in oh, them. So I guess mother corn syrup. Yeah. Yes, I know. I'm being <laughs> at this time. So. In other countries, in Australia particularly, um, that's where this person was from that I was talking to. She had let me in on the international secret that's not, I guess, it's not an intentional secret, but it is for us over here, that most of the <laughs> McDonald's menu is that we have here is actually illegal in Australia. <gasps> oh, my God. It's, and it's been illegal, like... For I I don't know since its inception maybe I don't know like oh, it's God well, because of all I mean... of the different things they put in it and the same is true for actually quite a few other European countries and you know like 
Wow. Canada does, they... Canada has different rules, you know. In Japan, yeah. all of our uh, stuff is produced in Japan. And oh, Japan- really? Oh, yeah. And it's all locally sourced. And, like, uh, oh, the Japanese... Smart. The McDonald's in Japan is bomb. Okay. I went, I took Corinne, Corinne and Layla what? love McDonald's. It's like, oh, my they're kids too. day. But then mm-hmm. I took them to the States and they were like, I want to try American McDonald's. They tried oh, it and they're like, gross. this is crap. <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. It's the French horrendous. fries taste I'm... like oil. Everything's mm-hmm. greasy. I'm... I uh, was reading about their fries. They have these special giant potatoes that they have grown somewhere, I think in Idaho or so. They're, they're a special <laughs> breed of potato. And they, but this special breed of potato, uh, it has, it attracts aphids, I think it was. And uh, so they, mm. has, they just have to use a shit ton of pesticides on these things. But they must have these Ew. long special potatoes for McDonald's. And then after they harvest them, they have to just let them sit out in a in a warehouse to like let all the gases off of them and they just stink and like the people that work Ew. in the farm won't even walk out there because it's just, yeah yeah so it's like that's in our fries oh that is so just, foul i know why do they taste so good <laughs> after they're made into french fry shapes they're literally packed in sugar water before they're salted and deep fried Oh, that's so there's actually sugar inside of the potatoes and oh then they God. salt it and deep fry it and that's why they have their signature flavor ladies Those sneaky bastards all you need to do yeah. is look up the calories on french fries oh. mm, from terrible. fresh french fries and then mcdonald's <laughs> french fries and note the calor- <laughs> caloric difference and the also the uh gl- glycemic index difference Mm. Oh yeah, it, yeah. I don't, like to, st- I, don't, I don't like to hurt my own feelings, so I don't look up nutritional information. Yeah, they. <laughs> <laughs> You're in denial. <laughs> yep. Oh my god, ignorance that's is terrible. bliss. But I think <laughs> that is. I think that America has a big problem where you know Japan we don't because um, Japan's just a small country and so it doesn't take a long time for things to totally. Get but I feel like what happened with America was that everything became you know, these conglomerate markets, right? Like it's chains Mm -hmm. now. And so they they buy them from one place and then they have to truck them across the entire country. And when you do that, you know, fruit expires. And so you have to Mm -hmm. preserve the foods in ways so it doesn't, so it doesn't expire. And in doing that, you're losing the nutrition and you're also like putting so many chemicals into the food that, I mean, uh, when I came back to the States this time, I was tasting food and I was like, this is disgusting. Like your, ch- your cherries and your strawberries don't taste good. Ugh. No, yeah, no, but... they, they don't. You have to, yeah, you have to wait until have summertime and go to a farm and pick them. That's what yes. I like. Yeah, to that's do. what it tastes good. <laughs> but guess what? Yeah. That's what the strawberries taste like in the supermarkets in Japan. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, yeah, the ones I've had lately. Do they have I them mean, year round or do they not have them year no. round? Not no. Okay. Before. So they actually observe natural harvest Seasons. times. Yeah. So, yeah. Because like <laughs> back in back in our parents' day, they did not have strawberries in the in the grocery store year round. They didn't even have mm-hmm. oranges in the grocery store year yeah. round. And to get an oh, orange wow. at Christmas time, that's why people used to put oranges in their stockings oh, yeah. at Christmas time because it was a huge treat to have an orange and it would have cost like a small fortune. Oh, I never thought about that. That's why oranges yeah. and stockings were such a big thing. Yeah. 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 Never, yeah. never thought about that. Because that they sense. didn't perfect refrigeration and uh, like mm-hmm. mobile refrigeration of trucks until yeah. like the 1960s, I want to say. Yeah. So, Sounds about right. Yeah. yeah it's, you guys, I'm I, like technology has been a great thing in so many ways, but I feel like yeah. for nutrition, it actually oh, it's fucked us is over. killing us. And I think that's yeah, why literally. there's such yeah. high rates of cancer and things like that. <sighs> Mm-hmm. I know, I know. Well, and and Santa put... is not doing us any any good with that, with all their goddamn. Anyway, I'm gonna yeah. stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you got to remember too that they they're putting additives in food that make them addictive. 
Yes. I know. So, they want us to buy more. Yeah, capitalism uh, is just, you know, the food must sell sell mm-hmm. as much of it as you can. So make it yeah. taste as good as you can. Oh, doesn't I matter laughed, what the nutrition is. I laughed so hard. I I saw, I, I love watching uh, Stephen Colbert. And so uh, oh, yeah, Bernie Sam, Sanders was on and he has this new oh. book called It's Okay to Hate Capitalism. <laughs> That's what it's called. That's awesome. I do fucking hate capitalism. It's insidious. It's a cancer, a blight upon the world and humanity. It, it's I ugly. Know. It's mm-hmm. vicious. It serves its purpose in some ways. It has its it downfalls in some ways. It serves mm-hmm. its purpose in certain ways, but there is not nearly enough regulation on it in this country. Mm-hmm. It's basically running a country that used to have some merits to it. And I think Mm -hmm. this is what some people thought about when, you know, the unnameable person brought out bring America or make America great again. Some people thought back to the times when people weren't so vicious and selfish and greedy. And, you know, back when people like there weren't massive amounts of homeless people on the streets all over the place, everywhere Mm -hmm. you step. So um, I think that's, you know, what people wanted to think of without thinking of all the other downsides of those eras. (laughs) And I mean, uh, and now, um, now in the U.S., we have all these uh, food deserts. I think is the term. Yeah. You know, these small yeah. towns in the middle of nowhere. Literally, all they have is a Walmart. If they're lucky, you know, maybe they maybe they have one grocery store. And uh, but I, I think a lot of people uh-huh. are just getting their food from fast food or convenience stores a lot of the time. There's not that many. I essentially options. live in a food desert now. Like yeah, that's you that's are in a small town situation. Now. Yeah, like we moved from a larger metropolitan area where there were lots mm-hmm. of choices. Like we could have gone to Safeway, and since we're in the Pacific Northwest, Fred Meyer, which is Kroger, oh, and else, and us, uh, and as the Safeway down south would be called Vons, you know. But whatever. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> there's Albertsons, there's Hagen's, there's all these different places where people could go and get food, and um, and that, and because of that, the prices were. You know, they weren't great, but they were at least bearable. (laughs) But like moving to a small town, you would assume that food is probably more um, affordable because you're in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah, but no, cost of living. They they actually price gouge for it out there because they know that the people the people are not going to drive a certain distance to go to a competitor or most people won't. So they spike their prices. So we only have two grocery stores in this town and they're both ungodly expensive. Like the same gallon of milk that we pay, like, like there's um, one brand of milk in particular. First of all, there's only two brands of milk in the grocery store here. Some grocery stores will have like four different brands of milk in it. But over yeah. here, we've got two brands of milk. So you have two choices. You have the extremely expensive choice and then the moderately expensive choice. And the moderately expensive choice is about a dollar more than in the uh, metropolitan area where I used to wow. live. Yeah. So How much it's are like, eggs where you are right now? Have eggs skyrocketed too? Um, You know, oddly in this town, I don't think they've price gouged them as much because a lot of people have chickens. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. Um, like, and there's a lot of farmland around here. So like, I it's think a good time have... to have chickens. Yeah. I know. Right. Living like Kangs. Um, oh. but anyway, like, yeah. So the, the eggs in this town are okay. They're like two ninety nine a dozen, oh, but that's, that's not bad. there mm-hmm. are some areas where I've seen them like four ninety nine a dozen. Oh yeah. Well, exactly. And... And we j- we also need to just say that, you know, okay, yeah, so eating a healthy diet can affect your mental health. We have established that. Oh, yeah. Back now, on track. let's also talk <laughs> yeah. about, no, well, because this is actually, <laughs> this, this ties in because True. people with lower socioeconomic situations yeah, these have deserts. more, they're more likely to have mental issues. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because if they're not yeah. eating the most nutritional foods, then uh, yeah, of course they're going to feel like shit and have issues. It's so well, sad. Well, not it's like just this- not just that. It's that mental illness and learning disabilities and other kinds of physical disabilities um contribute to your ability to make a living. So, yeah. like 
you know, there's all kinds of um, economical barriers for people who live around in this area. Like there are, I've noticed that there are more people who, you know, have different sorts of disabilities and, you know, they needed to go out into the country to afford places. But that's when, you know, back when these places were even cheaper and now just normal, sane people who have, you know, regular capabilities need to go <laughs> go out here to afford housing. Um, yeah, and it's cheaper bad. to buy junk food than yeah. to buy healthy, nutritious food. They are there have been tons That's what's of so studies fucked up about this world. Yeah it, yeah, it must be like that everywhere now. I could go to Taco Bell and get a meal for a fraction of the cost that I could make a nutritious meal for a family. You know, like so... it. Buying meat it's at the really store. weird. Uh, plus, when you have ADHD and impulse control, oh, me anyway, I I never feel like cooking. Do you know how no. many steps that is? That's so many tasks. And so uh, I apply. I yep. know. Jen, I know that uh, Jen, you you cook your family dinner like most nights, probably right. So yeah, my husband and I both share the duties of cooking. Um, yeah, we yeah. like to cook together. It's kind of our hobby, and we we Aww. make it fun. So, um, we, we love it. It's, it's just great. I know it's really nice, but yeah, Um, isn't it, isn't it sad that just going to McDonald's is cheaper than making a meal at home? I mean, and even fast food is getting expensive. Like Taco Bell is not cheap anymore. You remember 25 cent tacos in the nineties? Oh yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You Mm -hmm. could like, you know, skip out of school at lunchtime, go grab some 25 cent tacos. (laughs) and you had a you had a lunch for way cheaper than school food (laughs) exactly exactly everything's getting more expensive yeah Yeah. (sighs) it's just it's unfortunate yeah it is yeah okay so so that begs the question what the hell do we do about it what the fuck do we do yeah yeah i mean (laughs) normalize community gardens no yeah yes i I think it is honestly yeah <laughs> we might need to I, it would be amazing if we uh if our if the u.s you know got more into that mm-hmm. and more yeah. local local foods i mean you know it's nice and then you know people say oh we'll just support local buy local but sometimes buying local is more expensive and maybe you can't afford it yeah. you know like that's just, true well uh, it, yeah. it wouldn't be as expensive if the government didn't keep subsidizing the big agricultural companies uh, and kind of yeah like, you know? this is the billion true. dollar yeah yeah it, uh-huh and making <sighs> you know family point. run farm businesses that have been go in business, business for generations go under mm-hmm. which is really sad because we need that diversity in farming and in business and in every part of life we need that diversity mm-hmm. otherwise um okay so it sounds it sounds like protein is good for brains and carbs might make us feel not as good but it's good to have a balance though right i mean i don't know what mm-hmm. you, you've got some research statistics for us right um here's what i know from okay. going to the doctor and being mm-hmm. told things from a doctor so keep in mind Ooh. you're hearing this you know second hand off of somebody else's family physician so if Garbage you really want to borderline <laughs> it's 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 on it's on the line guys this is on the line so <laughs> if you want to get real facts about what nutrition is appropriate for you go to a dietitian go yeah. to a mm. nutritionist and find out ask your doctor you know but given like your medical history expensive. what should you eat I mean, isn't it's expensive it is. to go see a doctor though? Yeah. And you can find a lot out on the internet as well. So mm-hmm. um, some things that we found out just by searching the internet and looking at places like, you know, like uh, medical news today and ADDA2.com and, you know, websites that cater to ADHD and also to medical needs is that beneficial fatty acids like omega-3s are super 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 important oh, for yes, our mental absolutely. function yeah. with adhd because they literally nourish your brain your brain is made of fat people it is mostly yeah. fat and if you do not get enough fat in your day you're basically starving the thing that makes up your brain mass so yeah. it's just not a good idea so omega-3 no fat like- diets are not for us 
That's in like avocado <coughs> and, and salmon and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, eggs. Is it in eggs? Do you know mm-hmm. if it's in eggs? eggs? Yes. Yes. Oh, hell yeah. Eggs. Eggs are good. Um, yeah. Eggs are excellent, especially with the yolk. Egg now, there yolk. are some people who can't eat them. Not yeah. the white. The white doesn't have omega-3 fatty acids in it, though. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just The bulk just of the, the fat from the egg is from the yolk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, so, yep, yep. Um, yeah. yes, I absolutely agree also, with that. Stamp of approval. Poof. Next. That's not garbage. Um, <laughs> Yay. Not garbage science. <laughs> Next up. A higher intake of protein than is what would be considered normal for other people is what we should think of as our normal because protein acts in a kind of interesting way in the body. It basically takes, so if you were to eat a small ball of rice with some uh, broccoli and some chicken, that chicken is going to take the carbohydrates and basically keep them like make it so that they don't rush all into your bloodstream in the, at the same goddamn time and overwhelm <laughs> your uh, overwhelm your system with blood sugar it's going to basically draw that process out yep. along with the fiber the fiber is good good for this too draws the process out so that instead of your carbohydrates lasting you like one or two hours they'll last you like maybe 4 hours instead and you'll have a more prolonged energy um, instead of a spike and then a letdown, you're going to have like more of a nice even arc. <laughs> well, and it's oh. important to note that, um, you know, I, I'm sure everybody has heard like white rice is not as healthy as brown rice and white bread is not as healthy as multigrain bread. And the reason for that mm-hmm. is because brown rice still has the sh- sh- the uh, shell on it. So mm. white rice mm-hmm. is processed so that it takes that shelling off. But that shelling yeah. has a lot of fiber in it. And the whole grains have fiber in it. And what fiber mm-hmm. does is it drops the glycemic index. It takes the fiber, it takes longer for your body to digest it so your so your insulin levels don't spike. So that's important for people who, you know, for for brain function because you don't want sugar spiking for having Mm -hmm. a a healthy brain it's just you know sugar does not great things for the body you want to have a slow release over a period of time and that's what you should strive for and that's how your brain functions the best that's how your body functions the best if you have diabetes that's kind of what you're looking for um Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. like so you want to you want to keep on that you need carbohydrates to function you do absolutely need carbohydrates to function but Mm -hmm. It's better to have the carbohydrates that are high in fiber so that it's lower on the glycemic index and that sugar release takes a longer time. Mm. So uh, so not donuts. <clears throat> no. <laughs> no, not no. donuts. I wonder I wonder how whole grain donuts would be. <laughs> Oh, Ooh, whole grain so, donuts with bacon on top. See, there is protein there and fat well, there. That's what I was just gonna say. Like, so it sounds like if you're if you're eating those carbs with a little protein, it'll balance it out a little bit, and then it won't you won't crash. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, crashing maybe not as much. Crashing is when you ha- you get into the danger zone because that's when you start snacking and stuff too. So oh, if yeah. you're yeah. eating if you're eating things that are high on uh, on the glycemic index then you're going to spike it, then you're going to crash. And when you crash, then you're looking for that spike again because your brain is like, I want that spike, I want that spike. And so you start mm-hmm. looking at the sugary foods and the fatty foods, the fried foods. If people with ADHD yeah. have typically have a really hard time with fried food. Mm. It's so good, Interesting. Though. I didn't know that. Fried in yeah. what, though? Because there, there are like Anything. a bunch of different things you can fry it in. Anything. Just because really? it's so high, yeah, because because it's high it's in fat and carbs. Because it's or typically like... breaded. Yeah. Oh, the breading. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. There it is. The breading. Yeah. And then the oils. The the, the the oil the oils aren't helping things out. If you fry something in coconut oil, of course it's going to be uh more healthy. But you have to remember that there's a burning point of all oils. And a lot of the natural mm. oils, like olive oils, they're not supposed to be used to be cooked with. Mm. no you gotta get avocado oil for that yeah Yeah, and like it has a higher burn rate that's good shit yeah it's expensive though 
It is. Yeah. It's really expensive. So you have to, you know, decide if that's really worth it for you. And I can't imagine the cost of getting one of those deep fryers that people have at home and then filling it up <laughs> with avocado oil. It would oh, cost so much money and like no but if you know. spray it if you spray it and use an air fryer i'm sure that would be great mm. oh yeah. So, yeah so what do you what do you guys typically have for breakfast in the morning do you have breakfast? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> wait a minute. that requires executive functioning skills <laughs> i know i know okay so like i okay because i have learned I have learned over time, like, yeah, having protein in the morning for me is good, keeps me going a little longer. Mm -hmm. So I'll typically try to have, well, I mean, when I was really good, I would have like, I would actually make eggs or eggs on toast in the morning or sometimes avocado toast. But uh, mm. I, I've been lately, I've just been so lazy that I, I have a bottle of kefir in the fridge at all times, you know, that mm -hmm. like drinkable yogurt and... Oh. Oh but, yeah, but, yeah. So that's got protein in it, but yeah. you know it's got a lot of sugar too. So I don't know. It can. Yeah. You can get the. <laughs> yeah. You can get it un unsweetened. Oh, gross! I'm not gonna drink that though. <laughs> well, it, but you <laughs> could. Be you, you can sweeten it yourself. Like I, I'll take it. Uh, too lazy. And I'll, I'll put it into a smoothie. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was on a smoothie kick for a long time too. Yeah. yeah, that's always good. But yeah, Jen, do you eat breakfast in the morning? I do. I have to because I take a medication that will wreck my gut oh. if I do not. So I have to take my ADHD medication in the morning, which That's... requires me to eat a full <laughs> meal. And I mean a substantial meal, oh, ideally with a good amount of protein and fat, because I've noticed that if I do some shit like eat like, you know, Fruity Loops or whatever the, the crap bullshit we've got for kids, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like if we have that in the house, which we don't always, but, you know, randomly we'll get it for the kids. Um, it will still wreck my gut. So nothing but carbs. Oh, wow. No, interesting. It's a no go with Stratera. So um, at least if you're motivation. sensitive. Mm -hmm. you're, you're externally motivated to eat breakfast in the morning. <laughs> I do. I am yeah, not. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm motivated because I have to be, because if I don't take my medication in the morning, I'm not going to remember to do anything else during the day. So mm -hmm. like, so basically what I do is, um, some a lot of times we'll cook extra food at dinner time and I'll have it for breakfast the next day. Oh, that's so um, smart. So that I can, you know, <laughs> jump over that executive functioning hurdle and do it while I know that like, yeah, you know, it's a great life hack. Yeah, like we mm -hmm. just make extra and then we eat it for for breakfast a lot and we just have a different idea of what breakfast can be. Like, can you have homemade spaghetti and meatballs for breakfast yeah sure can you have oh, lasagna in japan, for breakfast? that's you normal could. <laughs> oh, oh really oh. in it, japan there's oh. not there's not breakfast food and then like other food like really they, just no food. they eat they eat fish and rice and uh miso soup for breakfast like so does your mcdonald's have a breakfast menu oh yeah. it does okay it does yeah but <clears> like <throat> you know if you go to a cafe or something their breakfast is going to be scrambled eggs a salad uh, mm -hmm. half of a slice hmm. of bread and probably like an onion soup or something like it's, that sounds that's awesome. Common. Wow. Yeah, so that's like, awesome. You know, it's, it, I'm used to eating dinner for breakfast. So like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to me, that's like no big deal, but in the event that I, it's like the weekend and I have extra time, I would make something like French toast. If the kids are expecting something breakfasty, because it's, Ooh. you can add extra egg to that. Like you don't have to water down the egg so much right. you don't have to put in so mm -hmm. much sugar um you can sweeten the batter with um something like stevia instead yeah yeah but the white bread the white bread will make oh no we don't spike. use white bread in this house <laughs> we only do uh we only do wheat bread in this house unless there is a reason that we are doing white bread for something very specific. I like that um, Ezekiel. I like that Ezekiel bread that you get in the freezer area. That's like the sprouted bread. It's supposed to be oh, good for you. And also, you uh, I still oh. get I still get Dave's killer oh, yeah. bread sometimes. You know the ones with all the seeds on it. Yeah, oh, <sighs> yeah. That's one thing about Japan get... is they don't have a lot of like multigrain bread. It's like white, really white. white. Oh, yeah. So it's really wow. sad. interesting. Oh. That is sad. Yeah. I but love multi-grain bread. This is not a bread better. country. 
Yeah. No, yeah, you guys not. are not like, it, it's not a bread centric country. Yeah, no, it's rice. Like a, a rice centric country. Yes. <laughs> yeah, rice and noodles, right? Oh, yeah, so mostly rice. But uh, yeah, yeah, so that you have to eat breakfast in the morning because of your pills. What about you, Ellen? Yeah. I just, I, I mean, there are days where I will skip breakfast, but then I, I have to have an early lunch. It, it's like, you know, on those days, it's usually around like 1030 that I'm like, all right, I'm fading here if I don't get something in me. And so, uh, mm-hmm. you know, just um, I, I'll have, I have like a stash of protein bars. <clears throat> uh, I also like to get uh, those premier protein shakes that uh, they sell at the grocery store. And like, they're not... Hmm cheap but they're great in an emergency they have like 25 grams of protein in them or something ridiculous like that oh, wow. it's crazy yeah they're the uh, yeah Premier proteins they're the only brand i found that tastes good and uh hmm. so i i love having that as a like last ma- like so that's that's basically what i'll do if i just don't feel like making anything is i'll either uh grab one of those or drink the kefir or whatever but yeah hmm. I, I, ideally it's nice to have something like eggs in the morning though isn't it i mean just uh, yeah keeps you full for a while mm-hmm. i i forget to eat breakfast like all the time so yeah but yeah my, <laughs> AD, my adhd symptoms are definitely worse if i'm either not eating enough or eating too much or eating too much junk you know like have you ever just had one of those nights where you just like feel like shit and then you think back on all the things you ate and you're like Oh, ah. yeah, that could be, it could be, yeah, could have been that box of red vines, you know? Ah, right. <laughs> the whole well, box. Ellen, um, since you're, the, since you are the inattentive type here and Annette yeah. is the hyperactive type, what does feel like shit mean for you after you've oh. eaten an ADHD trigger food? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so for me, I think it would be, I just get extra, extra fatigued and grumpy and I just my executive function is just even more dysfunctional than usual you know I'm just like I don't want to do anything I just want to sit and watch tv yeah I don't want to talk to anyone you know like (laughs) that's when I said it's worst yeah like it so it just kills my motivation or if I'm like if I oh just the other day I actually got myself like a a a coke uh slushy at the gas station which probably has a ton of like high fructose corn oh, syrup in it and I bet. yeah yeah and then i just I, I don't even know why i did that i was just like oh that sounds really good well impulse control so you know <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think about the fact that i was gonna have to work for four more hours and um yeah i just mm-hmm. felt like shit after that i was just like i couldn't focus um didn't oh. want to do anything lost my motivation so that's that's how oh that's how it manifests for me yeah especially if i've had too much sugar or just too many simple carbs yeah yeah you know. yeah high fructose corn syrup is absolutely a um a food trigger for me and my kids so we mm. tend to try to buy products um like if we're buying pre-made foods we're buying stuff without that in it because because it does um cause behavioral fall you know kind of behavioral blowouts with the kids like they can get crabby and uncomfortable like they don't really recognize what's going on inside them that they are feeling crabby that they're feeling off of their normal selves but they definitely get a little more cutthroat with each other yeah once they've had high fructose corn syrup and more aggressive um God, do you think and, this is happening to all of us adults too? Is that why it just seems like you know people are always fighting online, possible. and you know, or are we just like maybe sugar well, is just making I us hate it, each other? I don't know. I think people are just assholes. That's all. <laughs> I think assholes. it's well. <laughs> there's been studies done that like online behavior is similar to people like on the phone calling customer service, and they're equally as terrible because you don't have to look the person in yeah. the eye when you call them names. So you don't have to see the emotion and hurt on their faces and realize that they're real people on the other end that are just, you know, trying to work and get a wage and go home to their families. Like, yeah, so that is exactly right. Yeah. It's, 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 it's being anonymous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That, that anonymity doesn't really work so well, but, but I, I don't know, maybe, maybe people would be nicer to each other if we all ate better. Do you, uh, one, one thing that throws me off, like, cause I don't drink soda or anything like that really, but like mm-hmm. if I drink like Coke zero, 
or anything that's uh-huh. like a zero calorie in it, it uh-huh. messes me up. And I don't know yeah, why. Yeah. Well, I think it's because your body. I've read about this. I think it's, it, it, this <clears throat> might be garbage science, but I think it's because if it tastes <laughs> sweet, your brain is like, ooh, I'm getting some calories. This is good. We're going to use this for energy. But then your body's like, nope, nothing here. You know, zero calories. And so it like fucks you up a little bit. Like you're, you're yeah. expecting to get some, you know, a fuel from that, but hmm. it's not. So yeah, it I makes my know. stomach wonder... upset. It makes, mm. get, it makes oh. my anxiety bad. Mm, anything yeah. that's, that's an artificial sugar for me anything yeah. artificial I don't sugar know. just like the aspartame maybe. how do you say that yeah aspartame it just or aspartame yeah uh, right. aspartame <laughs> okay but, uh, <laughs> yeah but it, it like really sets off my anxiety yeah wow yeah. i think that's, I, a thing. that's not a trigger for me um i can do sugar like the zero sodas and they don't seem to impact me at all really they in fact like sometimes they'll actually settle my stomach if i have a little bit of nausea going on so i'll get like some sugarless soda and like it'll actually yeah yeah i know but if i have a full sugar soda oh my gosh like i'll actually get a headache from it and like Mm. i just feel like mentally sluggish like i'm not really there and like Mm -hmm. you know maybe i'm a little tired a couple hours from that i will get tired um you know, I'm just, I'm not myself as much as I want to be. I can definitely feel the lack of um, impulse control kicking in and lack of, uh, or my, the lessened um, uh, 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 attention span. Yeah, that's it. Mm. That's the word I'm searching for. My attention span gets shorter. My um, my impulse control, I think gets worse after I've had like some sugar, I'm more likely to eat like crap even more after I've had just oh, a little totally. bit. Totally, It's a vicious it's cycle. Yeah. You, you eat oh, a little sugar horrible. and then your body is just like craving more. Like, yeah, yep. just keep feed the beast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. why it's good to do those like sugar purges and like, mm. you know, the, I did the best that of your years ability. ago. And that's when I learned how to drink black coffee with nothing in it is when I quit sugar like 10 years ago Mm -hmm. and uh i I, so i I kept that habit i still drink black coffee a lot i I like lattes too but um Mm -hmm. yeah sugar is just so good though and coffee coffee helps me focus Mm, coffee is our friend Mm -hmm. it is our friend i i mean we just it's funny because like a lot of this stuff I had taken out of my diet when I did keto and, and Ellen had mentioned keto for people who have epilepsy, um, especially like it started out in children that have epile- had epilepsy. They started prescribing keto, the mm-hmm. ketogenic diet way back in the day. And before the ketogenic diet was known as ketogenic, there was a like a very closely related diet called the Banting's diet that was in England oh. in like the 1800s. So it's actually a really old philosophy on how to eat that's just been twisted around. And Atkins was really like similar to keto and yeah. like yeah. it's just kind of this Although, weird branch. The thing that I will never get on board with with like these like low carb diets is like you need mm-hmm. carbs. Your mm-hmm. that your your chemistry needs some carbs. And uh, mm-hmm. you don't eat a stick of butter, like oh god, no, that's garbage. Okay, so here's yeah. here's where people start eating sticks of butter. Yeah. It's because <laughs> okay, so a lot of people fat go bombs. into the keto diet. Yeah, they're oh, all they're fat saying get those fat, fat bombs. bombs. Are a thing. Yeah, the fat bombs remember, are a thing, but they shouldn't oil. be meals. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like so. What people started doing was doing like shortcuts. And yeah. I, I used to eat like a <laughs> tiny little pad of butter if I absolutely had to, if I knew for a fact that I wasn't going to like eat for most of the day or some stupid thing like that. Um, and, and I did have some busy ass schedules at one point in time where I was like, I would just sneak a little bit of something that I could have because most of the food surrounding me, I couldn't have. So, mm. and it was also like keto food. You have to make it. There are no shortcuts. You can't yeah. just go to Taco Bell and order off the menu and get this, that, <laughs> and the other removed because it all has stuff you can't have in it. It's all um, if you're carbs. very strict with your diet, <laughs> if you yeah. are strict with the ketogenic diet, I think that it can be okay for some people, but that's my opinion. And I'm not a nutritionist or a doctor. I'm just mm-hmm. somebody who's used it. And um, 
I mean, also, I should divulge that I have polycystic ovarian syndrome, something that affects mm. the way that your um, system processes sugar. And um, a lot of us oh. have uh, something called um, uh, insulin resistance. So we have insulin in our bodies, but our bodies are resistant to our own insulin, which makes us gain weight a lot, oh. really rapidly. That's and um, that's, that's why I can eat like a speck of like a fraction of the normal size portion as somebody else. If I'm eating like re regular foods that other people eat, like I can eat a fraction of, of a portion of somebody else's meal and still gain weight faster than them because Ugh. it's just too, it's too much. So I'm really like, I don't do sugars very well. A lot of the stuff that I have in my house, like a lot of, t a lot of the times that I'll eat sweet things that'll actually have sugar replacements in it, like stevia, or, um, you know, Splenda or something like that, because I just can't tolerate the sugar. I don't have as much carb in my diet as probably a lot of people do. And that's mm -hmm. just because it, it seems like I do better with a lower carb. Um, but you know, and I also felt great on keto. I felt like I had way more energy. I had more mental clarity. I can't say I had more focus because of all the energy. I, I don't think that was... <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of energy and my brain is not naturally like focused. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I felt um, really good on keto kind of... too. I, I remember that I did keto for two months in like 2017 and I remember feeling really good, but then I just, I couldn't mm -hmm. eat all those. I couldn't eat all those foods anymore. I started to miss fruit you know spring okay, came fruit and i was is like so good. Uh, fruit mm -hmm. but i don't think that i don't think that eating fruit should be a problem so i think that mm -hmm. in in my in my opinion mm -hmm. i think that a lower carb di uh, diet centered around nutritious mm -hmm. foods cutting out mm -hmm. sugar uh, as much sugars as you can if you're going to uh -huh. have grains make sure that they are the fibrous grains that you know mm -hmm. are low on the glycemic index eat mm -hmm. your eat your fruits because they mm -hmm. are high in fiber if you yeah. eat an yeah. apple you know try to get a, if you can That's get true. organic ac apples get organic apples because then you can eat the skin Mm -hmm. And that's where all the vitamins and the fiber are. It's not in that white sugary part. Isn't it in the, the fiber? I remember. Isn't it like the fiber impacts how many net carbs you get? Mm -hmm. Isn't that yeah. how it works? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. if there's that's right. a certain amount of fiber, yeah. you're gonna, your body's going to process fewer carbs. Yeah, that's yep. cool how that works. Exactly. Yeah. Like So basically, when you want to know the net amount of carbs that you are ingesting, you would take the regular carbohydrate count, including all the sugars, Mm -hmm. And then subtract the number of grams of fiber, of dietary fiber total in the food. That's so, right. I remember that now. Yeah. Just to pretend here, I don't really know what an apple is, but let's say that an apple <laughs> has 25 grams of carbs. It's got way more than that. But let's say that it just has that for my easy math because my, you know, my lip, limp dick brain, like <laughs> Ellen, let's call it. <laughs> and then an apple has, let's pretend... 10 grams of fiber, dietary yeah. fiber in it, you would take 25 minus 10 and you would have 15 net uh, carbohydrates that you have consumed. One so, serving or one median apple provides about 95 cal calories, zero grams mm -hmm. of fat, one gram of protein, 25 grams of carbohydrates, 19 Whoa. grams of sugar, <laughs> Holy and shit, you three grams of fiber. Oh. Three grams of fiber. Didn't nail that part. No. So. <laughs> wow, you were right on with the car. I, I was thinking, oh, I don't think they have that many. So, yeah. <laughs> well, plus they have an additional 10 grams of sugar, she was saying, or 13 grams of sugar. Yeah. So, like, but it's natural sugars. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So you have to add the sugars into the carb into the carbohydrates or make sure that that's that math has already been done before mm -hmm. you subtract the fiber because you have to count them both. They're all yeah. carbohydrates. But you know what, so. guys, really, in the end, wrapping kind of wrapping this up, but like <laughs> really in the end is if you want to try the ketogenic diet good on you. If you want to yeah. try Adkins, mm -hmm. good on you. But here's the simplest yeah. rule because if for your brain health, if you want mm -hmm. to have a healthy body, a healthy brain, 
minimize your ADHD symptoms naturally, mm-hmm. then what mm-hmm. you really need to do is you need to eat nutritious, healthy foods. Just basic. Yes. That's mm. it. So if you're tr- if you're sitting there, my ADHD Whole brain foods. is not going to calculate grams mm-hmm. of fiber, grams of sugar, no. because that's a pain in the no. ass. Oh, so yeah. that is. As an ADHD person, that is one of the hardest things to to do with the keto diet. And I survived on – I actually stuck to this diet for an entire year, which is – which I was told is way longer than most neurotypical people <laughs> stick to the diet. They can only – like even neurotypical people will cap out at a couple of months. Wow. So I was real stubborn and I stuck to it for a whole year and I did lose a lot of weight and I did feel good and it did feel like the right thing to do at that time. But right now I can't because my life is too cluttered with other things and I cannot mm-hmm. mentally take on that extra load of counting calories and adding up carbs and all right. of this stuff. So such here's what we got to do is just eat whole foods. You <laughs> just have to make lifestyle arrangements. You eat ha- stuff it- that comes out of the earth. Either yeah. Plants, animals, well, fruit. stuff that comes out of the earth. But if you if you shop for your groceries, because let's face it, not all of us are digging out in the dirt to go get our yeah. own potatoes out, right? So, like, although it's good, if you go into your if you if you go into your local grocery store, go the the rule of the rule that people like to talk about when they're nutritionally minded is don't go for the stuff in the center aisles. Go for all the stuff around the around. sides where mm, the yeah, you know the dairy the fruits and vegetables, the meat section, stuff, the, the, you know, baked goods that don't have very much sugar in our case, but you know, things that aren't as processed as Mm -hmm. the stuff that's in the middle aisles. That's where all the soda and chips and snacks and cookies and, you know, like all of that stuff exists there. And if you just go all around all that crap, you can still make your food. It can be very nutritionally minded. You'll be a lot better off because you'll be, you know, jettisoning, jettisoning a whole bunch of, um, just icky, gross, potentially cancerous things inside your food. And, and then, you know, you don't have to count calories so much. You'll know that you have taken care of all of that. And then when you're in a place where you can, can't count calories and measure portions, and your brain's not going to go into overload, then you can take on that extra mental load of calculating all that stuff for your own personal life with the help of a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. Well, and don't go shopping hungry. Just don't do it. Oh, don't. Oh my God. (laughs) Worst, worst thing to do. Never. So I think for me, for me, I'll just say my, my, uh, you know, now that I'm 40 years old, I, I think I've just over the years figured out There's, you know, probably a handful of high protein, easy foods that I will eat. And when I'm feeling lazy and my executive function doesn't want to make food, you know, so I I think that's, that's just, you know, my, my suggestion is just like, find something that you like. I mean, you don't even have Mm -hmm. to like, like sometimes I'll just cut up an avocado and eat it with like some, I don't know cheese i mean just it doesn't even have to be a real meal you know just throw some foods no, well, together who says you have to eat a real meal yeah who exactly says you have to? yeah we're, we can do whatever yeah, we want like, we're grown-ups you the rules mm-hmm. yeah. yeah you yeah. do what you want like yeah. so That's if right. you don't have the bandwidth to make an entire fucking meal don't make the goddamn meal just don't do it you know grab a fruit mm-hmm. grab a vegetable grab some meat there you go you're or done just, <laughs> yeah, eat, eat a block of cream cheese if you need too i mean you know. <laughs> okay that's garbage keto i gotta say that is garbage keto you you cannot do that and be healthy I ate a lot of cream cheese on, on the keto, keto diet. <laughs> well and don't don't just deprive yourself of things okay every every that once too. in a while it's okay to have mm-hmm. you know a cookie or a donut or those kind of things it's yeah. just when it becomes regular and that it really affects your body and Mm -hmm. do know that if you do eat a trigger food even though you really want it you're gonna be triggered so just keep that in mind and I think that's all I want to say about that (laughs) yeah and just just for you know for for people who aren't maybe still aren't clear what a trigger would mean for them it could mean something like 
over agitation, increased anxiety, increased depressive symptoms, increased restlessness. So our hyperactivity component will will be even more hyperactive and want to move and fidget even more. Um, you might get headaches, you might get stomach aches, you might um, you know, just feel off like you're not like yourself. You might feel mental fog. You might mm-hmm. um you might just not be able to focus even more than <laughs> or than you had previously not been able to focus. Um, it might feel like your medication simply isn't working for you. Mm, um, that's good. That's, that's one where like I've had meals where I'm like, I know I took my medicine, but it doesn't feel like I took my medicine. So if you have eaten an ADHD trigger food, you could be feeling these, these things. And if you're not medicated, you could be feeling them even more. So, um, that's such a good point. Yeah. Just, if you're feeling miserable yeah. a lot, take a good look at what you're eating and just see if maybe you can make some yeah. changes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you know, that that's the thing is you don't have to change all the things at once as long as you make, you know, steady changes. So like let's say one one in one particular month you're gonna cut sugar. Well, don't do that in the same month that you lower your caffeine intake. You know, that might yeah. be too much for some people. Um <laughs> or maybe somebody's like, I'm cutting cheese out of my life. Well, don't do yeah. that the same time at the same time that you also cut all these other foods. Like I know, right? Who would want to do that? But seriously, oh, I mean, cheese. if you decide, if you if you decide to jump off that cliff <laughs> and, and t- take cheese out of your life, I'm not a you psycho. don't want to be doing it on the same month that you took sugar out of your life. I guarantee it's a bad idea. No. So just one step at a time. And That's once no you feel live. like you've mastered one thing, then just move on to the next. It doesn't have yeah. to be a race. You don't have to get there tomorrow. Nobody is going to give you the first place trophy if you take all the things out at once. (laughs) And I think we need to hear that since we have ADHD because we want immediate results Mm -hmm. impulsively. We want it now (laughs) and we will wreck our lives trying to improve our lives if we don't think about it. (laughs) That's really profound what you just said. We will wreck our lives trying to improve our lives. Damn. I, I feel like I've done it before. <laughs> yeah, we're like our we own all worst have. enemies. Like the be- there, I'm sure yeah. there's lots of quotes about the best intentions. Just you know. Uh. Oh, yeah. the The road to hell is, <laughs> hell is paved, paved with good that's intentions. The one. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So that goes along with food. So, yeah. And last but not least, feel no shame. Everybody wants a cookie sometimes. Eat oh, it, yeah. but no, you're going to be triggered, like Annette said, mm-hmm. and um. The rest of the time, just make the best possible decisions that you can make, given your circumstances, given where you are that day. Yep. You know, some people have days where they're forced to eat McDonald's because they have nothing else to eat because they forgot something from their house, whatever. We've all been there. Don't punish yourself. Just do better the next day. You know, and maybe you know you could you could take like half the bun off your hamburger and just you know get fewer carbs that way. Uh, Yeah, yeah, open face. Yeah, I love open face. Exactly. Or the the naked naked burger or the let the lettuce bun. I remember those were popular for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I don't don't know if McDonald's would do lettuce buns though. I don't know. know. Some places will, but oh, oh, there you go. I know Burger King does. Mm, they do it because nice. we used to that used to be the one thing that we would do is get burger king with no condiments and only like cheese and meat and lettuce and tomatoes and that was like it Oh, nice! <laughs> um, so we know that burger king will do it but um yeah just you don't even have to go that extreme just you know make better decisions you could eat the burger and not the fries you could eat the burger without the bun you could eat you know you could just say mm-hmm. goodbye to the soda in the parking lot. Just bye. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, it doesn't have to be like a profound change overnight, but mm-hmm. everybody can benefit from making one or two small changes and then making more if they feel inclined. So just see how it feels to you. Yeah. If you have access to a doctor and a nutritionist, do it. If you have access to a therapist while you make these change, these changes, you know, go in talk it out, talk out the frustrations because it can be frustrating to change your diet. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, take care of yourself first and worry about the judgments of others last. That's right. Do what's best for you. That's right. Fuck everyone else. Fuck everyone else. Mm -hmm. Just do what's right for you and just say fuck that to the rest of it. Um, (laughs) 
do no harm, fuck but that. fuck everyone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So in closing, <laughs> we hope that you find something really excellent to eat later. And we hope that thing's yeah. not a donut. And we hope that it didn't come from the Monsanto factory directly. Um, <laughs> so um, anyway, after all of that, like verbal diarrhea, I've just belched out here. Good night. <laughs> good afternoon. Good morning. Whatever time it is where you live. And Basel Top. Basel Top. Bye, ladies.